Around 1820, a canoe carrying a corpse washed ashore on the island of Tupuai. From the corpse, a plague spread death across the island, reducing the population from 3,000 to less than 300. As the survivors began to rebuild their society, many embraced Christianity, but had to choose which form to adopt as their own. By the 1840s, there was intense competition on the island of Tahiti for Christian converts. The English Protestants had been there for a few decades, and now the French Catholics were really establishing a presence. And there was a battle between the two for converts on the island. And then in 1844, missionaries show up on the island of Tubuai, 600 kilometers south of Tahiti. In 1843, when Joseph Smith calls Addison Pratt and Knowlton Hanks and Noah Rogers and Benjamin Gruard on this mission to the Pacific, it's really a landmark in the history of Latter-day Saint missions. It's by far the longest missionary journey that has been attempted in the history of the church up to this point. When they arrive in what is now French Polynesia, uh, they're about to embark on a mission unlike the experiences that other missionaries have faced up to this point in terms of bridging a greater cultural distance and even learning a new language in which to preach the gospel. While the ship's crew traded for supplies, the people of Tupuai invited the elders into their homes, fed them, and prayed with them. Though the missionaries were bound for Tahiti, King Tamatoa and a council of local leaders urged one of them to stay. I took the subject into prayerful consideration and was soon convinced that should I leave the island, I should be running away from duty. Addison Pratt. Les premiers missionnaires sont arrivés ici le 30 avril 1844. Pourquoi ils sont arrivés ici? Parce que Dieu les a dirigés ici. Pourquoi? Parce que nos ancêtres, mes ancêtres, sont prêts à recevoir l'Évangile, c'est-à-dire l'Église de Jésus-Christ des saints des derniers jours. Nabota and Tari, a couple in the village of Mataura, took Pratt in while the other elders sailed on to Tahiti. Over the next four months, with the help from Nabota, Teli'i, King Tamatoa, and then several English-speaking sailors who were on the island, Addison Pratt's able to learn Tahitian, becoming the first missionary to learn another language from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. With their help, he's able to navigate this new language, but at the same time, they're able to learn more about the gospel as they engage in this process together. Mes ancêtres font partie des premiers pionniers qui ont reçu les missionnaires. Je dis par exemple comme Pauma Tanepau, qui est l'ancêtre de mon de ma mère, et aussi euh, du côté de Tamatoa. Tamatoa aussi a reçu les missionnaires. On July 22, 1844, Nabota, Teli'i, Pauma, and Hamoy are the first Polynesians baptized into the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and they formed that first branch on Tubuai. Pratt embraced the local culture as he talked. Pratt insisted on eating what they ate and living how they lived and fishing with them rather than having them bring fish to him, as they had done with previous missionaries. L'autre religion forçait les gens, comme des esclaves, à travailler pour eux. Alors que elle de Pratt, non. Il était là pour servir, pour aimer les gens et pour donner des instructions, pour enseigner la parole. As the church grew, Pratt split his time between the villages on the two sides of the island. When he was troubled, he would go into the woods to ponder and to pray. A little experience tells me that to baptize and build up a branch is but a small thing to what it is to keep it in order after it is built up. Addison Pratt A Protestant missionary soon heard there were Latter-day Saints on Tupuai and visited to rebuke converts. But he underestimated their knowledge and commitment. He upbraided them for being baptized by me when they had been sprinkled by him. But Teli'i maintained the point from Scripture so well that he could not confute her from it. Addison Pratt. 
in Mataura, the saints told the Protestant missionary they no longer needed his teaching. We have got a man we like, for he is satisfied to live as we do and fare as we fare. A year after Addison Pratt's arrival, 60 men and women on Tupuai had become Latter-day Saints. I have friends here that nothing but the bonds of the everlasting gospel could have created. Less than one year ago, I landed upon this island a stranger, and to these inhabitants, a barbarian, for they could not understand a sentence I uttered. And what has the Lord accomplished by my feeble hands in this little time? Addison Pratt But storm clouds lingered in the distance. Pratt hadn't received any letters from Nauvoo, and American newspapers carried rumors that Joseph Smith had been killed and the church brought to an end. Though shaken by the reports, Pratt refused to give up on his mission. If one half of the church is shot and the other half have denied the faith, I know the work is true. And by the help of God, I am determined to make all the noise I can about it and spread this gospel to the ends of the earth. Addison Pratt. On December 4th, 1845, a ship arrived with letters from Pratt's wife, Louisa, confirming Joseph Smith had been killed. But the same ship also brought letters from Elder Benjamin Gruard with news that 600 people had joined the church on the Atoll of Anna. Gruard begged Pratt to come. Nabota and Terry pledged to go with him and serve. Before they left, the whole island gathered together to wish them well on their journey. Whenever it shall seem good for you to return to us, we shall hail that day with gladness. But wherever you go, our prayers and blessings shall attend you. Teli, in particular, made huge contributions to the missionary work, uh, especially on the island of Ana'a, where she accompanied Addison Pratt and her husband Nabota came as well. But Teli really kept tabs on all the people and who needed help and who was sick, and she would bring them to Addison Pratt and make sure that they were blessed and anointed. And she also sort of served as almost a Relief Society president there, bringing the people together. And she taught them the new hymns. So she would stay out from dusk until midnight singing these hymns in their language, helping the local members to learn them and get them really into their hearts and minds. With Terry, Nabota, and Pratt strengthening members in Ana, Gruard felt free to spread the gospel to other atolls in the Tuamotu. At the same time, Hamoe and her husband Haametua sailed from Tupuai to Tahiti to preach the gospel to family and friends. By 1846, the mission in the South Pacific is pretty well established. Addison Pratt decides he's going to leave Tubawai and go and meet the saints. But he promises the members in Tubawai before he leaves that he will ask that more missionaries be sent to them. And they ask him to please return himself and to bring his wife with him. In fact, Tali'i and other sisters prepare a gift. They sew clothing that he can give to, to Louisa. Well, when he comes back in 1848, he does bring a group of 21 missionaries with him. And among that group are five women, including his wife, Louisa Barnes Pratt. And while there have been a few women that have accompanied their husbands on missions previously, this is really the first time that we know of that a woman was set apart uh, to venture into the missionary field with her husband. But French colonial authorities increasingly restricted religious freedom, and in 1852, the missionaries left. When Addison Pratt returned four years later, authorities detained him on Tahiti and refused to let him sail to Tupuai. For the next four decades, members maintained the faith on their own. Addison Pratt observed that it's easier to set up a branch than to maintain one, and that was definitely true for the branch in Tubuai, who continued their faith for the next 40 years in isolation amid intense persecution, sometimes threat of death, often they were meeting and hiding, but they continued their faith because they believed in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. <laughs> Well, 
C'est un héritage que j'ai reçu de mes ancêtres. Et c'est pour ça que je remercie le Seigneur d'avoir dirigé ses missionnaires, elle de Pratt, ainsi que ses compagnons ici, à Toubol. Parce qu'on a reçu cet héritage et nous continuons à perpétuer et à enseigner ça à nos enfants.